Hello, this is Algebra 2, Topic 2-4, the notes for 2-4. Today we're going to be talking about solving linear systems. So systems of equations are, we have two or more equations with the same variables, and the solutions are represented by points on the intersection. So, we can go ahead and use the graphing calculator to solve these. In order to do that, I need to solve them for y so that I can put them into the graphing calculator. So x minus 2y equals 5. Let's get the x moved to the side. Negative 2y equals 5 minus x. Divide everything by a negative 2. y equals, go ahead and just put 5 minus x in parentheses. Divided by 2. That can go in the calculator. And for the next one, uh, minus 4x, uh, 3y equals 9 minus 4x. Divide everything by 3. y equals 9 minus 4x divided by 3. And that will fit in the calculator just nicely. Um, because they're going in the calculator, I'm not worried about making them clean. Uh, I just want to go ahead and make them. So we pull out our graphing calculator. Uh, we go to y equals, clear out whatever may be there, and start writing our equations. Let's do the first one, parentheses 9 minus 4x, close it, divided by 3. Uh, parentheses 5 minus x closed divided by 2. Then we go to graph. We look at our graph. Our graph looks something like this. And that. With our intersection being somewhere over here. Now to find that intersection, because our graph is not extremely specific, we're going to go to calculate. So second trace is calculate. We want to go down to number five, which is the intersect. It's going to ask us for the first curve, hit enter. It's going to ask us for the second curve, hit enter. It wants us to guess. We want to put our cursor somewhere close to our intersection. Here it already is there, so we're going to hit enter. And it tells us that our intersection is at 0 0.6, 2.2. 0.6, 2.2. Now what's great about using the calculator for this is that even if we get weird numbers, the calculator will still give us an answer. Let's go ahead and take a look at number two. Again, our first step is to get the y values isolated. So we're going to subtract 3x. 8y equals negative 32 minus 3x. Divided by 8. y equals negative 32 minus 3x divided by 8. Uh, the next one, subtract 9x, negative 2y equals uh, negative 22 minus 9x, divided by negative 2, y equals uh, negative 22 minus 9x, divided by negative 2. We can go ahead and put these into our graphing calculator. Um, parentheses negative 22 minus 9x divided by negative 2. And parentheses negative 32 minus 3x. Close it. Divided by 8. We graph. And our graph looks something like that. 
with our intersection over here. To find out where that intersection is, we do second calculate, down to number five, which is intersect. It's going to ask us the first curve, we hit enter. Second curve, we hit enter and guess. I'm going to scroll over here close to my intersection, but I don't need to be right on top of it. This is close enough. And now it says our intersection is here at negative 3.08, uh, negative 2.85 when we round. Um, these are not exact. Uh, exact answers would be fractions. But when we're using the calculator to solve these, sometimes we're going to need to round. And I'm going to put a little double wavy symbol over here to mean that it's approximately this. It's not exactly that point. So calculator solves most of this. But you still need to know the algebraic methods of solving. And we're going to talk about two methods. First, we're going to talk about substitution. And then we're going to talk about elimination. For substitution, what we do is we solve for one of our variables. Um, I'm going to choose this x right here because it's already almost by itself. So x minus 2y equals 5. To get that x by itself, I add 2y to both sides. And I get that x equals 5 plus 2y. Now that I know what x is, I take and I plug it back into my other equation. So instead of x, I'm going to put 5 plus 2y, continue writing my equation. Notice I still have the plus 3y equals 9. Okay. Now I'm going to solve. First by distributing, 20 plus 8y plus 3y equals 9. 8, 9, 10, 11. 20 plus 11y equals 9. Subtract 20. 11y equals negative 11. Divide by 11y equals negative 1. Now that I know what y is, I'm going to plug that back into either equation. Personally, I like to use that first equation again. So x minus 2 times negative 1, because that's what y is, equals 5. x plus 2 equals 5. x equals 3. So my solution is 3, negative 1, because x always comes before y. And so that substitution, this should not be something new. Um, maybe it's something that you haven't done in a while, so it's a refresher. But all we're doing is substituting. And if you'll notice, we have three steps for substituting. The first step, pick and solve for one of your variables. The second step, plug what you have into an equation and solve for the other variable. Third step, Put what you got into your equation and completely solve for the first variable. Then you have your answer. So that's substitution. Substitution is really nice, especially when one of your letters is already by itself. Now we're going to talk about elimination. Now, elimination is better when I don't have any letters that are by themselves. So what we're going to do is we're going to eliminate by either adding or subtracting. Now, the question is, do I want to eliminate my x's or do I want to eliminate my y's? You get to decide whichever way you prefer. Um, I'm looking at this, and I know that I can multiply 4 times 2 to make it 8. I'm going to multiply everything on the bottom times 2. And that gives us 6x plus 8y 
equals 4. Now, the reason that I did that is because now my y values are the same. Because my y values are the same, I can actually subtract my equations and get an answer. Well, 12x minus 6x is 6x. 8y minus 8y is 0. And negative 8 minus 4 is negative 12. So now that I have that 6x equals negative 12. When we divide both sides by 6, we get that x equals negative 2. Now I can plug this into either equation. I'm going to go with the one that has these smaller numbers. And so 3 times negative 2 plus 4 times negative 2. Sorry, we don't know what y is. plus 4y equals 2. Now we solve negative 6 plus 4y equals 2. Add 6. 4y equals 8. Divide by 4 and y equals 2. So now we have our points negative 2, 2. And we have our answer we're moving this mouse out of the way. Now this was elimination. The first step is that you have to get some of your variables to match. Then after you've gotten your variables to match, you need to either add or subtract in order to get rid of the common value. Because 8 minus 8 is 0, I subtracted. Had this been a negative 8, then I would have added these instead. Once you subtract it, you should have one variable, which you can solve for. Plug that back into one of your original equations. Solve for your other variable, and you're done. Now, you may prefer elimination over substitution, or you may prefer substitution over elimination. They're both good methods. They're both usually available to use. But sometimes one is slightly better than the other. For instance, on number 5, it says to choose an appropriate method and solve. Well, given that none of these uh, are 1, so I don't have just regular x or regular y, I'm going to go ahead and use elimination again. Now, I need to get either my x's or my y's to match. Well, there's nothing that I can multiply by 4 to get 7, or multiply by 3 to get 4. So I'm going to need to actually multiply both equations. And last time we got rid of y, so this time let's get rid of x. If I want to get rid of x, I can multiply the top equation by 4, and the bottom equation by 7. Let me show you what that does. 4 times 7 is 28 plus 4 times 3 makes 12y, 4 times 9 is 36, 7 times 4 is 28, plus 7 times 4 is 28, plus 7 times negative 4 is negative 28. I'm going to subtract because 28x minus 28x is 0. 12 minus 28 is negative 16. And 36 minus negative 28 becomes 64. The 0 doesn't matter. Divide both sides by negative 16. And we get that y equals negative 4. Now that I know that, I can plug it into either equation. 
I like small numbers. So we're going to say 4x plus 4 times negative 4 equals negative 4. Which means that 4x minus 16 equals negative 4. Add 16 to both sides. 4x equals 12. Which means that x equals 3. And so our solution is 3, negative 4. Now before I move on, uh, which this is the last example, I do want to go over how to check your answers. Basically, I use this bottom equation to check this point. If I want to make sure that it's right, I plug these values back into the top equation. So, I've got 3, negative 4. Let's do 7 times 3 plus 3 times negative 4. And I should get 9. So I know that this equation works. You can actually check your answers on every equation just the same way. Here, because I use this equation to get y, I would plug back into this equation to check. Here, because I use this equation to plug in, I would use that one to check. And so that's how you can make sure that you have the right answer. Well, uh, hope this was beneficial to you. Have a good day, and good luck on the assignment.